Hi, and welcome to the Sports Media Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Springer. On this podcast, we'll take a journey throughout the sports media world to meet different professionals and what they do and their experiences in this industry. First guest on the podcast is a good friend of mine named Jackson Snyder. He is the sports director for Meridian Media in Salina, Kansas. Excited to have him on the show. Hope you enjoy. Jackson, thanks for being uh, the first guest on uh, on the podcast. Thanks, thank you for being on. Uh, how are you doing today? How are you doing? I'm good. March Madness is here. Uh, okay. My basketball broadcasting responsibilities are over. I get to relax a little bit, kick my feet up, watch some games, and uh, you know it's actually nice here in Kansas for once. It's been freezing the last few days, so uh, no complaints on my end. So tell me a little bit about what you do, what your job is, and kind of your day-to-day responsibilities and and some of the highlights of of what you do. So I am the sports director at a a small market. Well, I guess we could call it a mid-sized market in central Kansas, in Salina, Kansas, uh, for Meridian Media. We we, uh, control six stations uh, in our area, uh, in both Salina and Abilene and Lindsborg, a little town, uh, a little south of Salina. And we have Uh, Six local high schools that we carry all of their football and basketball, select baseball and softball. And then we carry two local NAIA colleges, Bethany College and Kansas Wesleyan University, which I am the radio play-by-play broadcaster for. Um, So we handle all of that. And as the sports director, I make our weekly sports calendar of when games air what radio stations they're on who's broadcasting them who's board opping them uh, making sure that all of our sponsor ads on the radio are up to date all sorts of different things um, kind of just making sure that everything's in neat little piles for everyone else uh, and making their jobs a little bit easier and then we also organize stuff because we are a K-State and a KU radio affiliate for all their athletics and then the Denver Broncos as well which is a little tough for me as a Chiefs fan but uh, you know it's it's still fun uh, being slightly tied to an NFL team so um, just kind of organizing all of that is kind of my daily work and then on on top of that after the nine to five type stuff ends then I go and I, I do uh select high school games and then all the Kansas Wesleyan athletics as well. So it's, uh, it's a lot, but uh, it's certainly a lot of fun. And I understand that you are an alum or you attended Kansas Wesleyan. So for you personally, what's that like to maybe have the opportunity to have a connection to somewhere that you've already, that you already attended? Yeah. I, so I spent my first two years of college at Kansas Wesleyan as a student athlete there. You probably can't tell now, but I used to be a little athletic. Uh, I played tennis there for two years Uh, before I decided to transfer to the University of Kansas and uh, pursue broadcasting a little more seriously. Um, But for me, the opportunity to come back and be the radio broadcaster for for Kansas Wesleyan is amazing uh, because it's a really great opportunity professionally, uh, but also for me personally to, to do games for a team and a program that I truly care about and I'm invested in um, you know, it's, it's special. You, you can't really put it into words much beyond that. I mean, just this last weekend, I was with our men's basketball team in the NAI national tournament for just the third time in their program's history. So uh, to be able to be there and watch that uh, real history for their athletics program um, was something that, you know, the price of, you know, me getting paid to do a game on the radio, it doesn't really matter to me. I would have done that for free, um, but it, it's so much fun to see the university growing and um, one that I'm, I'm so passionate about. So uh, truly special uh, for me to have that extra tie into my job. Yeah, and kind of further along that, what, what would you say that sports broadcasting, sports media, your job, what does that mean to you personally? Like, what, what does it mean to you to have the opportunity to be in the position you are? Well, so for me, like growing up, sports was the only thing I ever really cared about, which, you know, now as a 26 year old, that's kind of it sounds stupid because there's a lot more things in the world uh, than sports. But this is all I've ever wanted to do, Um, you know, just being around it and seeing not only the games, but the stories behind them um, is really fun for me. I mean, to to see, especially with the, the colleges 
uh, that I've covered. I mean, to, to see where different kids come from, from all over the country and all over the world to come play college basketball in Salina, Kansas, and learn about, um, you know, where they've been and where they're going and all that stuff. It, it's a lot of a lot more deep than just the basketball or the football that you broadcast. And to me, that's really what it's about. Um, and I don't think I knew that until I got really knee deep in this profession, because I used to just love the games and going to the games and being a part of that atmosphere. And that's still great. Um, but when you're on the bus with a team and you, and you get to develop personal relationships with coaches and the athletes and, and, you know, maybe donors of the programs, um, it's, it's a lot more than just the games. And that to me is something, um, that, that all I like to keep in here a little bit more than, uh, you know, just the, the deep chested big time game winning calls and all that stuff. Was there ever a specific moment, uh, where you kind of had this epiphany of like, yes, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is the profession I'm supposed to go into. Did you ever have like, did you ever have a moment where it were like, where it just kind of clicked where it was like, okay, yes, this is what I meant to do. Yes. And um, so when I transferred to KU, um, part of why I transferred was the broadcasting program um, at the student radio station that I had heard a lot about through some friends and through my relationship then with uh, a guy you know really well and Brian Haney, the voice of the Jayhawks. And I, I decided to take the leap to KU, which was uh, sort of a weird jump for me because I grew up in a very K-State household and that, that was um, a wrench in my family's plans for me uh, to do that but you know it, it was a jump that I felt was necessary and the first basketball game that I did at the University of Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse they were I remember it clearly they were playing Vermont and it was packed in there for this random game in mid-November like it, it wasn't a meaningful game but there were like you you know out on Fieldhouse it's packed yeah. always and when you're sitting there and you put the headset on and you're you're stumbling through your first real call in that situation but you're loving it and the struggle because it's a fast-paced game and it's loud and you can barely hear yourself think after that game ended I remember looking around Allen Fieldhouse and thinking, this, this is what I want to do. This is where I'm supposed to be. And it felt really good to know that I made the right decision to transfer from one college to the next and pursue this opportunity. And it, I knew right then that it was the right move. But obviously in the sports industry, as you kind of talked about it in the beginning, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, it's, it's even more than nine to five. What are some of the yeah. challenges that that you faced and, and how do you overcome that, you know, knowing that it's it's a it's more be more work than what people realize kind of behind the scenes? Um, I would say that a lot of people probably don't realize how much preparation there is, uh, because aside from the nine to five office work that I have with my radio job, you know, and then you go do the game that takes an hour, half, two hours you know, and you're not getting done until, you know, sometimes 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and then you have to travel home sometimes. So for me right now, I live in Manhattan, Kansas. It's where I was living prior to taking this job in Salina, which is just about an hour down the road. So now on top of my late nights with games and, and you know, all that stuff, I'm commuting an hour one way uh, almost every day. And then I have to also squeeze in time to read stats and make my spotting charts and, and learn about the opponents of the teams that I'm broadcasting and, and, you know, kind of figure out storylines and make sure I know what I want to talk about and what's important and what's not so important or what's a fun note, all these different things. Um, and I think a lot of people don't really realize that sometimes there's just not enough hours in the day and you're going to have to sacrifice um, sleep or a, a personal life or, um, you know, hobbies and things like that to to succeed and, and to get places like this. And to me, this is, um, you know, it may be a stepping stone, but to me, it's it's like the best possible stepping stone because I enjoy where I'm at and what I'm doing. Um, but it takes work to get to this point 
you know, putting in hours um, at unpaid internships and, and making relationships and doing all the stuff that nobody else wants to do to get to this point. So uh, I would tell people, if you want to do this, you have to know you want to do it because there's going to come a time where you're calling your, your seventh game in six days and uh, you're running on three hours of sleep and, and, you know, a McDonald's burger or something is all you've had that day. And you're going to question, is this really what I want to do? And if, if it's not, it don't, I wouldn't, I would say, don't, don't worry about it. Do something else, find a different time and place to, to, pick up broadcasting as like a hobby, but I wouldn't make a career out of it. But for me, even through all the weird struggles, like th this is what I want to do. I can't imagine, you know, sitting behind a desk at some random office job and, and worrying about the budget and, you know, sending an email about, you know, accounting or something like that, not to dog on that profession, but <laughs> It's just not, it's not for me. I'd much rather put in the work that I have and then get rewarded by going to do um, my late night work at a high school basketball game. Like if that's the worst part of my day is being out late covering high school sports, that's a pretty darn good day in my book. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but when you look at your, when you think about your personal life, I mean, you just outlined it nine to five plus, you know, usually games in the evenings. I mean, what kind of impact has, does that have on, on your personal life and, and kind of how do you have a work by how do you have a work life balance uh, in that in that scenario it's it's hard um don't I, don't get it twisted i mean i have a i have a girlfriend who i i am so grateful for because she understands um kind of the grind that this job is and she knows that we're not going to always be able to go to this event or to that party with her friends and uh, because of my work schedule. So um, having a really good support system that understands what you're doing and what you're going through and why, more importantly, you want to do that and put yourself through that grind is really important. But then you have to make the most of um, the off time that you do have. I mean, for me, my, my bulk of my basketball responsibilities all just ended this past weekend and I'm wasting no time. I'm going to Vegas, uh, this next week, um, just to, to, you know, have some fun and relax because the, the high school sports calendar from football to basketball, and on top of that, throwing the college games in there as well. And, and your normal responsibilities, there is no downtime for five, six months at a time. So you got to make the most of the time that you do have, uh, so I, I would always say, if you've got some time, do something with it. You know, if you need to take a day on a Sunday and just lay down all day and watch football, I do that all the time. But if you've got a chance to go and take in a cool experience or go on a cool weekend trip uh, on your rare weekend off, do it. Uh, the, I can't, I can't, um, you know, advocate for that enough because you're going to enjoy those times off much more than you probably would otherwise. Uh, besides going to Vegas, are there anything, uh, are there any other things that you do, would you say to kind of help yourself de-stress or just kind of manage your, manage your time off or what, you know, what are there other things yes. to do to help yourself kind of relax after, you know, an 18 hour day of stuff in, in high school, basketball, football, what have you? It's funny. Um, I didn't ever used to be a huge video game person. Uh, but when COVID happened, I got really into play an Xbox and I, I play Call of Duty all the time um, with with some of my buddies and, and um, you know, even just by myself at 2 a.m. to de-stress. And it's funny because it's not very uh, de-stressing of a video game, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. But it for some reason, that to me is a really fun release. Um, and, you know, w without that, I don't really know what else I would do. Uh, to de-stress. So i um, very thankful for Xbox, I guess, uh, on times like that. But do you feel like in a weird way, you talked about, you know, five, six months of, of being busy. Do you feel like in a weird way that, that that's good for you? you? You enjoy staying busy? You enjoy kind of that aspect of it? You know, at, at first, I probably wouldn't have said yes to that. Um, but yeah, I, I do think it's probably pretty good because once you get a couple of weeks into that grind, it's, it's a routine. It's a schedule. Like, you know, sometimes the days and the times of the games and the demands change, 
but ultimately it's the same thing. Like you, you have the same interviews to do the same games to do the same gyms, the same road trips. A lot of the times you, you just kind of get into a rhythm and that makes things a lot easier uh, than maybe a sporadic calendar. Um, and it, although it takes a long time and it takes a lot out of you, it makes things a lot easier when you know um, what you're getting into. And after a couple of weeks of getting into that rhythm, it, it gets a lot easier in terms of managing that whole challenge. What would you say is some of the most important attributes of a sports media professional, someone who's in the, in the industry? What, what are some of the important attributes someone needs to have to be successful in this industry? Oh, man. Um, I would say, for, I mean, the unwritten, like obvious is you have to be really driven and motivated uh, because if you're not and you're you're taking on a task like this, um, good luck. <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave it at that because there's, like I said, there's going to be nights where you are sleep deprived and exhausted and hungry and you don't have enough time to get everything done, but you do a little bit of everything enough to where you feel okay about it. And you're going to be just broken at a certain point driving from personal experience from Hugoton, Kansas to Colby, Kansas at two in the morning in the snow and um, at like 50 miles an hour down a country highway. And you're going to think, is this literally what I want to do the rest of my life? And if the answer to that question is no, then you're, you're not in it enough to, to want to do it and do it well. Um, but aside from that, I think having a sense of humor is very important because through all the hard times and the challenges, um, you got to learn to laugh at yourself because you're going to make mistakes. Other people are going to make mistakes. Everyone's human. And at the end of the day, it's all about like entertainment, right? Like you're calling a game so that other people enjoy it. So if something happens where you slip up or say something funny or call somebody by the wrong name, like be able to laugh it off and, and kind of keep rolling and have a good time with it. Because if you're stressing yourself out with all the outside things and you can't have fun with it at the same time, then, then it's not really worth it. In my opinion. You mentioned that drive to Colby. I wanted to circle back and ask you about your very first job. What was that job? How did you get it? And kind of tell me a little bit about more about that first job you had, the first sports media job you had. My, so my first real job out of college was in Colby, Kansas, which um, for people seeing this uh, who may not be familiar, um, you know, it's it's extreme Western Kansas. It's not the end of the world, but I promise you, you can see it from there. Um, it is out there in nothing on I-70. I was closer um, in the state of Kansas. I was closer to Denver than I was to Kansas City and Lawrence, where I was from, um, which was really foreign for me. Um, and it's just a small town, but it cares a lot about its sports and it has a community college. And um, my task was to just be the radio broadcaster for the high school sports and to do some other, you know, radio ad sales and pr uh, commercial production while I was there. Um, so I was driving all over Western Kansas to different small towns doing high school games and, and on the radio. And I learned really quickly that it may not be the most, you know, exciting town out there, but man, I, I find, I, I challenge you to find a more passionate place about its sports, especially in like the postseason, because it means something out there when a group of high school kids goes to state and, and plays three hours away in a, a random arena at the state tournament, um, the entire town shuts down and it's like a convoy. And I felt like I was part of a community that I had been in my whole life for that one year. And it was such a good experience too, because I mean, you're calling a lot of games and, and covering a lot of miles, but you're learning a lot with it. Um, and that ultimately led to me getting my second job, which brought me here to Manhattan, which is taking on a, a, a much different challenge in a bigger community. Um, and I'm very grateful for that because I was navigating a lot of different challenges, including um, the COVID pandemic, which happened. Um, I was sitting in the 3A state tournament in the state of Kansas courtside um, calling a game when I got a text saying, that every basketball tournament was canceled and 
nobody knew what that meant at the time, but that challenge, I call it like the last game uh, before the world shut down. And that was a weird challenge to navigate as a guy whose job basically depended on sports. When sports went away, I learned other ways to make myself useful um, for a small market radio station so that I didn't lose my job and, and I was valuable. And that led me to moving here in the middle of that pandemic about five months later to Manhattan to do a lot more sales and ad production and, and um, not as much play by play for a little while until I made that work for myself uh, because I, I knew I was good at it and I knew I wanted to keep doing that. Uh, but it, it led me to more opportunities and that in turn led me to where I'm at now. Sorry if that was super long winded, but there's no, a lot of moving pieces and parts. Yeah, no, that was, that was fantastic. And I just wanted to follow up on the, on the COVID question, you know, how did you adapt? What were some of the things that you did? Because you, I mean, you're right. When, when that COVID happened, there was that, you know, four or five, six months period of people didn't know what to do. There was no sports. Nobody knew what to do. So like, I'm a sports lover. You're a sports lover. You know what? How did you adapt to that in that situation? And um, well, the fir the first thing I rem I just remember uh, having a meeting with the the small staff of the people I worked with in Colby, and a huge huge revenue generator for us was a sponsored bracket challenge that they do every year, where you drop off um, like legitimate paper brackets at sponsor locations across town and they get radio ads but you couldn't really do that because one there wasn't a tournament and two you couldn't send people to other locations when you were supposed to shelter in place at your own home so there were a lot of weird challenges and i just remember sitting in this big office room that we never used uh, because it was the most spaced out that we could be and my boss just saying you know, like, does anybody have an idea? And I, I jokingly um, threw out the, the idea that I could create rosters for current teams on the old NCAA basketball 10 video game. And we could tw Twitch stream the games and people could watch them and you could still make a bracket. And it would be just as random as the real NCAA tournament it, but just with a video game. And I like, I kind of made it as a joking comment, but my boss loved it. And he, he told me to run with it. And so I spent two weeks constructing the most accurate rosters possible on a video game and then simulating computer versus computer full basketball games, basically, and streaming them all online on a YouTube channel for people to watch for entertainment. And I kid you not, people were so starved for basketball and March Madness that the town of Colby was all over it. And people were submitting brackets on a, a site that we had used to, to submit online brackets and pe people won prizes. And um, that to me, as stupid as it sounds, because it, when you really think about it, it is dumb. It is some dumb stuff, but <laughs> I mean, that little creative twist that I meant as a joke um, led to a very significant um, pivot for my, my company uh, where they were still able to generate revenue in a really tough time. Um, and people were still able to have fun with it in a really, really tough time. And uh, that to me um, was like the first step in learning, okay, well, maybe maybe I have some ideas and I can do some things outside of just calling games on Friday nights. And, and that learned, uh, helped me learn that I, you know, I'm more than just sports. And I did a lot more from their news coverage about COVID cases and talking with doctors and, and senators about the changes that were coming. And, um, that led me, you know, to where I'm at now, where I'm comfortable doing literally whatever is needed to help my my company succeed all right i got one final question for you um think back i want you to think back to your very first day on the job in colby in this case that was your first job if you right now sitting in, in where you are right now if you could go back in time and talk to yourself on your first day in colby what would you say what would you say to yourself that is a really good question what did I say to my, on my first day? Oh, man. Right-eyed, bushy-tailed, oh. walking into Colby, wherever. What would you say? Oh, 
man, I would say eat better <laughs> because uh, I, I, have, I have eaten a lot of fast food over the last couple of years uh, because of the time that you spend on the road and on the go. Um, I would say do that because uh, the better you eat, the more energy you have. And some uh, early on in my career, I was eating, you know, I mean, I still eat a lot of fast food. Don't get me wrong. But um, like I was eating bad for a while and I gained some weight and I was exhausted all the time. And I, I realized, hey, maybe you should like mix in a water and, a ve- and some vegetables every once in a while. But uh, that'll go a long way. Uh, and it sounds really elementary, but it'll, it'll help a lot rather than just eating McDonald's five days a week while you're on the highway. So, you know, fix, you fix go. the diet up hey. and get yourself some energy. No answer is the wrong answer, I think, to that question. So I, <laughs> I think you did a great job. Um, but Jackson, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was a real pleasure having you on. Uh, I wish you the best of luck and uh, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me. Rock chalk. Thank you.